create our project. In order to do that, we open the development environment and create a new project. Let's set a name and call it our game. Then we choose the version of our Android. Let's set it to 4.03. Next, the application requires us to enter a package name. Then, we enter the name of our activity. Let's call it Main Menu. Also, we choose Min SDK version 8 in Android 2.2. Then we click Finish and our project is being created. Our project is created, so let's go ahead and open it. Now let's speak briefly about the project creation. The project consists of the following folders. The SRC folder contains the packages with our Java files, and the folders Gen and DIN are utility folders used by the development environment to store its generated files. Android 2.2 and Android dependencies are branches that contain the libraries selected by the OS. The Assets folder stores the resources that will be presented in its original form and will not be changed during compilation. Then, the RES folder is used to store the resources. These resources will be compiled and converted to a bytecode, which will be assigned its own unique identifier to which our application will be referred. Also, each project must contain a manifest. This is the file from which the system receives the application configuration settings. Now we move to the allocation of resources in our project, and we will put images in the RES folder. The environment provides usage of image resources for various devices with different DPI by default. It is also divided into the folders, namely the drawable folder which has the identifier of its DPI. But, we will do this a little differently. We will create a drawable folder and use the no DPI identifier, which means that all resources that we will be using from this folder will ignore the DPI level on the device. Then, we move to the folder with our resources and select all images. After we're done with that, we simply transfer them using a mouse, and the environment offers us to copy the file or put a tag on it. We choose to copy the file. It should be noted that the development environment is telling us that our file has an invalid name and is describing what it should contain. Now, we move over and rename the file to Phone Game Bonus. So, we've renamed it and the development environment accepts our names. Now we put the music in the RES folder, but the music should be in the RAF folder, and this folder is not created by default. 
However, you can create it yourself. So, now we've created the RAF folder. Next, we open our folder with our resources, select all music resources, and copy them to the RAF folder. Now we have only the font left. Here is our font, and we copy it in the Assets folder. As you can see, we've copied all our resources. Now I will draw your attention to this file, which we will use for our buttons and panel. For the file itself, the image is very small. Now, when we will be stretching and deforming this image, it will lose its shape and it'll start to look pretty ugly. So, what can we do at this point? Standard utilities of the development environment have 9-patch utility. It can be used easily, so we go to the directory where our development environment is set up. Then we go to Android SDK and get in the Tools folder, and we run the 9-patch utility. Here it is running and ready for use. Now we move over to our Resource directory and select our file. The file is selected. Here is our working area of the window on the left, which we will draw. The stretched image will be shown on the right, and as you can see, it looks pretty awful right now. So, at the top, the image is blocked for us. We can only draw the top, left side, bottom, and right side. We highlight the area from above and the left side that will be drawn during stretching. For example, here we put a dot. The image is changed from the left. We choose Show Patch and it will show us the pink area that will be stretching. Then, we put another dot from the other side. This is on the left side, and it points to stretching up and down. Finally, we've got a cross. So here, this line will be displayed and stretched to the right and to the left. The other one will move up and down. Now our image looks pretty decent, and it's stretched nicely, so we need to define an area for content. Using a check mark, we select Show Content. Now the entire area of our image is highlighted for the content by default. We don't want that our content would come out of our button, 
so we need to limit the area itself. We do it this way. We draw a line down and highlight the entire area that will be used for the content. In order to draw, we just point and click on the left mouse button. Then, we draw another line at the bottom, selecting the border. You can see how the size of the blue area is changing on the left that is showing the size of our future content, which will be placed on our element. Here, we've done it. Let's look at the content. It will be placed slightly lower. When this is done, we just save the file. Next, we choose a folder, name it as button, and save it. Now, we move over to our folder with the resources. It should be noted that the file name was changed to btn.9.png. Please note that the name must not be changed. If you change this name and remove the point .9, then the image will be used as a regular one without the 9 patch. Actually, we will do the same thing with our image in the pressed position. Then again, with the same thing, we select Show Patches. Now the whole image is stretching. We select the shades at the top and the left side, and we switch to the content. Then we highlight the needed content area. We do exactly the same thing as we did with the first image. So, we're done, and we save our image. Now, we do not need the patch utility anymore, so we can close it. And of course, if we do end up needing it, we'll always know where we can find it. Now we move our resources to the project. Namely, they are being moved in the Drawable with no DPI folder by copying. You should notice that the development environment reads btn.png and btn.9.png as the same names. Therefore, we need to rename our original images. We just copy this pressed position and rename the file in the same way as we did before.
Now, we will look at the example that shows the difference between a regular resource without using 9patch and the resource that does use 9patch. For this, we go to our layouts. Then we open the main Excel folder and place a regular image. We choose our regular image without 9patch and, as example, a 7-inch screen. We stretch it throughout the screen. We set properties to stretch this image. As you can see, the image looks awful. If you enlarge this image, it is stretched terribly and it doesn't look that good. Now we choose our resource using 9patch. You can see that the image is stretched nicely, it is well proportioned, and it looks great. Even if we set a 10.1 inch screen, it will still remain beautiful. Also, if we stretch it throughout the screen, the image keeps its quality and we can use it as we want. So, all our resources are already allocated in the project. In the next lesson, we will create the main menu and explain how to handle the events in it. Can't wait to see you there!